it has gotten better with the cooldown reduction on his first spell, but uh, definitely is going to need Kitrak to do all the heavy lifting. Prepare for battle. <laughs> a little bit of all chat action happening and Saberlight, he has idol. Uh, that's apparently Jenkins. Um, Jenkins, we wanted what? to see him play something. Uh, let's see what's going on. I'm kicking your ass next time I see you. Uh, it's, we wanted to see Jenkins on a hero that does stuff, unlike Viper. Oh no, Sonic again. Oof. They didn't know if the rest of the team is ready to back him up. Oh, from behind, but Saberlight spots it out and is instantly away. I mean, Shaker can't really fight because you want to level Enchant Totem. So, yeah, it's not really a fight they want to take on the ra uh, Dire side. Radiant side. There was the, yeah, there was this one game where Pango was mid against Earthshaker. Uh, I was covering it uh, a month ago or something, and Earthshaker was forced to use Fisher to try to get some kills for the first blood, and then he lost the lane badly. I think in this situation, it's better to like lose one bounty rune, but you still have Enchant Totem, and then you have Aftershocks. So you can actually play the game. This matchup isn't you know as good because he's not playing into melee hero. He's playing into Storm, so I would say it was it's not that significant. But still, you want to have Enchant Totem. Fisher, too long of a cooldown. And you know, it's begins. just uh, gonna put you in a spot for oh, go push. They're gonna get Net. the root going in. Can they get the kill on the other side? I Nihilate's dropping low as well. It is going to be I Nihilate dropping first. Both mid laners taken down, greedily trying to procure a bounty rune, and it will be a one for one trade. Nothing of value was lost. Let's see who's gonna pick up some XP mid. Uh, they're both gonna TP. Now the only core soaking get that one creep. Yeah, <laughs> that's a ping right there. Instant ping on your support. Why are you here? You did mention cooldown reduction on Vibrant's Arctic Burn. It's it's massive. I think it got back in the days. It was a 60 second cooldown ability. Almost unplayable. Like, you use that, and if you don't hit one hero, you hit one, you don't hit the other, you're like, oh my god, what am I gonna do for another 55 seconds? But now, in a relatively long, uh, short cooldown, 26 seconds only. And desperately needed, because his attack range and attack damage with level 1 is very weak. They do manage to get the kill onto Saber Light while I was looking at the uh, top lane. That's uh, not a way to start off that lane. Because the Meepo is a scary hero, luckily enough, it went on towards uh, creeps. Yeah, on towards creeps that managed to kill him. But yeah, the Winter Wyvern, I've seen some Winter Wyvern builds that go for Arctic Burn, Cold Embrace, and then just level Arctic Burn a couple of times. Does mean your farming speed, I guess, gets slowed down without the Splinter Blast, potentially later down the line, but it is so strong in the laning stage if you have multiple levels of Arctic Burn. Absolutely. As a carry, you should max it out, lower the cooldown, damage scales, uh, health percentage. Uh, also, I was doing some math on Cold Embrace. Uh, this hero, if you're playing like some support Wyvern or just put one value point in it, it's... Uh, if a hero has 700 HP, you heal for 210 or 220. It's pretty wild how, how much it heals you. And it's a relatively short cooldown, 24 seconds, just like one value point in it uh, could make a difference. And of course it blocks all physical damage. Uh, in this case, it is not the best, considering there's so much magic damage on the opposing side. Bottom lane, some damage onto Sonic. You are playing against the Techies, Beastmaster, so there's a lot of spam coming through. With the Dyer's wild axes plus uh, anything the techies pretty much throws at you, always got to be on your tippy toes. Bottom lane definitely has potential to kill heroes. Sonic, as you said, needs to be careful, but Tio also dropping low. Five magic stick charges will pop it. Still gonna drop the Meepo. So like gets the kill with the boars. Now Skyward is actually being pushed back by Saberlight. Definitely expecting the drums build. It is obviously a Vlad's builder, and in this patch, kind of most off laners tend to go for Vlad's unless you have a Morphling. Wondering if he's gonna go that route or go for the drums. 
of slum and just never die, pretty much. Bloodstone, drums of slum in the middle of four meepos, other heroes. It's a, it's a very potent build, I would say. Saberlight already does have arcane boots. You did mention the spam going on in that lane, but Skyward gets the second Meepo divided. We stand. He's gonna drop. That's a pretty big kill. Bottom lane's actually the Meepo's got two kills and two assists so far. Decent amount of last hits. It's looking very good for the early game on Skyward. In this patch, I think you need to have one guy, at least one guy, who plays Meepo. Not necessarily from the safe lane, but I would say good gotcha pick, 23-24, when you put him on a mid lane, off lane, have some other hero that can be played at two different roles. Yeah, there's a couple of players that always uh, spring to mind when I'm thinking of Meepo. Uh, I'm sad that I never got to see the Abed Meepo return uh, in his days on uh, Shopify back when. It, was, uh, it would have been nice to see that Meepo return to the big stage. Absolutely. It's always... But now Meepo is in a good spot. This hero is... I would even say slightly overbuffed. A lot of damage coming out onto Sableite. One last hit skyward. He's going for the dive. And he does manage to get the kill. Killing spree coming through. And Thielicor has no way out of there this is just a tier one tower dive tp coming through in response from yopach level five doesn't have echo doesn't have a way to control the meepo and even throws out some bm right there that uh sadness on the rotation this is not an easy game like i said it after seeing the full lineup from shopify rebellion that this is not going to be an easy game for them by any means uh, uh, they're going to need to rely on some big curses, uh, getting other lanes killed. Fart Studios, Jenkins uh, will die. One last hit from Arteezy. We'll finish him off. And he did put that one point in Cold Embrace, as we mentioned on Fiverr, just to have that extra healing potential. Because you don't, if you have mana, you don't never have to go heal. A pretty solid pick, and it's a very good lane so far. He has top net worth on that Winter Wyvern. Thinking struggling a little bit so far in the game. Even TP towards mid to try and maybe make a play onto Yopaj? Mine. Yeah, this is uh, problematic. The Level 6 is a pretty nice timing for the Gyrocopter to get some damage in. But unless you go level four, six, you stay. I see him being level three at the moment. About to crack level time. four. Yeah, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> until, until that time, he kind of does nothing anymore <laughs> against Arteezy. He's just too strong. But his ulti has been buffed. Finally, this ulti feels good, where you actually throw three missiles instead of just one. It's a nice spread as well, so you kind of steer someone or block a path of uh, exit towards them in one direction. Scary. And the slow is always as nice as it used to be. Top side, Jenkins is just being bullied down, but Sonic rotating through. Nushu is there as well. He just uses Arctic Burn, has the curse available, needs to And find another TP. Send back I Nile. Do they have the damage taking down Cold Embrace to try and stay alive? He doesn't actually have the mana. Yopaj with the Echo Slam drop onto I Nile gets the kill. Kitrak heals his buddy up with the attendance wisps. And with even Thielacore joining in that top lane, they'll find another one secure. Jenkins, he's trying to get Ardizi. That's the main target here. Can they catch up to him? Oh, here comes Skyward. They need to fall back. If he catches one hero, they're gonna die, but Yopaj getting a triple and every single member of Shopify will be able to run away. Maybe Theo is gonna be in trouble here. Yeah, Skyward coming in to cut off his retreat. Nowhere to run, nowhere to go. Poof into death. Some big stuff from Shopify, Yopaj. Those heals that you mentioned, two points in Nature Attendance, plus one point in Cold Embrace. Keeping Arteezy alive, and we did talk about his itemization, what could potentially be, but seems like he wants to be slightly more oriented on farming, going for Maelstrom as his first item. 
I'm curious to uh, know if it's also because he wants Dyer, to possibly go Gleipnir against the Meepo later. Or if it's just uh, for the farm at this stage of the game. Skyward bottom lane, they're going in to get some damage through. He's trying to disengage on the main Meepo, but there's a curse available in case it's needed. Not Dyer's even needed. Kill gets to secured by Thielacor, and Yopudge is my idol. Somehow manages to find another kill in towards the mid lane without that blink dagger yet. Without blink, without echo slam. Not sure how he managed to get so close to Lion to burst him from 100 to 0. He, he's, he's my idol. Easy. <laughs> Radiant's bottom tower he is a is very scary attack. mid laner to deal with. I mean, all those he Southeast is. Asian mid laners that they got in Shopify and Radiant's EG. Bottom tower has fallen. Terrifying. Dyer's top tower is under that has been the success, uh, if you want to call it that, uh, you know, for EG for a long time. Abed has been their mid laner from Southeast Asia, and they tried different off laners coming out from Eastern Europe. For now, they changed the formula a little bit, but uh, you know, East Europe to Western Europe, Saberlight is in, and seems to be fitting in nicely with the team. Yeah. Coming into his own as well as Saber Chad these days. The interviews are <laughs> hilarious to watch. Absolutely. And look at him trying to make another stack, but there's way too many in this outer ring. <laughs> That's going to be his Aghanim Scepter pretty much done. Well, they're going to steal a couple of the stacks, though. That's a nice one for Meepo. And the boar scouts it out. But in from behind, Kitrak walking through, has level 2 Wisps. Could be able to... Nope, definitely can't stay alive in the meantime. A lot more burst damage coming out. Yopaj has that Echo Slam and a Haste Rune. So you gotta be very careful, because there he goes. Blows everything on the two supports, and very quick kills come in while Jenkins is farming the triangle. I saw him very low. I was like, where is Jenkins dying off right now? But the, the neutral creeps are uh, doing him in. And he's also farming with no flat cannon. This is off lane gyrocopter trying to be more like utility. Uh, but uh, yeah, I want to see how much gold Beastmaster is going to get from these stacks. This is pretty hype. Uh, Blink Dagger also on the Shaker. Can to get the damage in. There's the call down coming through on the Opudge. Definitely going to need a little bit more damage, and it might be Ionite. He doesn't actually have much more mana left. He's going to get the drag by Thiel for the core with a nice AoE stun. Caught inside the cogs, but who's caught with who? Because in comes Saber, Chad. And the roar is just deadly. Chasing for more. He doesn't have his Ags just yet, but he is closing in. And after this fight, plus the tower, it might be that far as well. Ooh, Sonic, only level 5 there. They definitely needed the burst coming out from Finger. So is Nusham, very close to level 6. Definitely needed those two ultis to be able to connect, to get on top of the target and just instantly burst it. Radiant structures are fortified. He only has power treads and a magic wand for strength items on Shaker, but he's walking around with 1700 HP. You know, that's just not fair sometimes. It's just not fair. Oh, hook shot. Yo, Fudge. That's big, nice massive. push back. He still does manage to at least uh, help in securing a kill, but they find a five kill streak picked up. Something uh, magical is happening for them. They are 6k behind, which is a little bit deadly, but just like last game, Skyward is top net worth, closing in onto his axe. That Meepo really is a farming machine. Once you get that Aghanim Scepter, Mega Meepo makes you. Unkillable Sonic trying to get the, the good angle. Maybe find Artesio. Catch him off guard with that one stun. Nusham, no hook shot for 20. Uh, Yo, Pudge might be the target instead. They're heading his direction. Kind of scary seeing Sonic with this low HP, but Yopaj walking up. Blinks actually on top of Jenkins. Dodges Sonic completely. And. Uh, Will he be able to control up Yopaj? Nope, definitely not. He blows his ulti on top can of he gets them. another one? Kendrick comes yes, in for they the can. And I just saw particle effects. I don't know what the Elecor was doing in the meantime because I just saw boom, boom, pew, pew, and everything's dead. Yeah, Nusham died to a neutral, so that's uh, some XP, some gold taken away from Shopify Rebellion. Indian's top tower is under attack. 
Arteezy itemizing completely against Meepo, going into Mjolnir as his first item. And look at the build, instead of picking up other abilities, he's just getting stats, which, uh, well, Universal Heroes, they do benefit from stats a lot. Huh, that is uh, an interesting choice. I mean, obviously, stats are really good on Wy Wyvern. This Golden Brace is such a nice spell to have most of the time. Oh my lord, Nushin takes so much right click damage from the Wyvern. Oh, nope, uh, they're gonna steal, steal the rune, XP rune. Arteezy will pick it up. On the other side, no one is there from Fart Studios to potentially snatch it. Sableite has his drums. And going into Vill of Discord, yeah, no surprise there. Shiva's Guard is also one of those items that kind of feels broken. Top Shiva's build-up is really good. And also reducing the healing, Meepo. of course. Meepo getting caught, Skyward dying. Yopaj, no Echo Slam, but he's been very active, involved in 11 out of 18 kills. And suddenly, 9k gold lead for Shopify. They will need to punch back. This Agatim Scepter timing on Meepo, they need to use the Jenkins. Holding the high ground with his buddy Sonic. Hookshot hits. Well, there's gonna be a cash coming through to the core. Might find the kill onto the techies. They do manage to take him down, but Sableite is walking in the middle of the fight with the drums of Slam. Doesn't really care about anything. Yo, Pudge. He cannot deal with them if they keep chasing him down. However, the curse just out of range for Iron Eyelid to get control. Jenkins, though, he's going to be an easy cleanup target, and Iron Eyelid can't sit to safety. It's Saber Chad in the building. Triple kill coming out for the Beastmaster. Started his laning stage off a little bit unfortunate, yes. but right now, you know, he's got the drums, he's got the veil, the Discord. He's closing in on that Shiva's top net worth by a lot. Beastmaster Gaming. This is a fight without Meepo. They definitely need Skyward to be in that fight. Uh, we did mention the Aghanim Scepter timing, but uh, they did manage to kill him before that. So unfortunately for Fart Studios, he was unable to join. Theo will pick up another rune. Saberlight, he's massive. He's been massive in the previous one on playing Timbersaw, now Drums of Slum. Veil of Discord, as you mentioned, and uh, Shiva's just a thousand gold away. What are your thoughts on the uh, Solar Crest right now? I'm just curious after the nerf. Uh, oh. I think I think it's a like a okay item for a support. Uh, what it was was like what was that? Because everybody bought like there was multiple games where I was playing everybody had Solar Crest. 10 Solar Crests in game. That's how good it was. Now you can't use it on yourself so you don't benefit as uh, much as you did before Nushim. I get the uh, solo kill here for by Arteezy. He needs a curse or another arc to burn. And he's gonna get him. Yeah, it was kind of busted, but right now it feels like an item I don't want to buy on my when I play support anymore. It's like it was so good that it now feels yeah, so it terrible. Was, <laughs> it was unreal how good it was, but uh, no, I think it's a still decent item where you're buffing up your carry. It's just you're not getting the benefits. You can't get out of trouble. This is a big kill. That Easy thousand gold for them. Good track. Won't be hunted down in the meantime. Still 13k net with lead here for uh, Shopify. Will they be able to break the 1k a minute mark that they had, uh, that they didn't manage to break last game? That's the real quest at this point. Oh. I think they're going to be able to do it this time. Top tower has been denied. But yeah, Solar Crest, when there's like decent amount of physical damage, I think it's a, an item that you should buy. But there are also like, if there's magical damage, then you should skip it. The Glimmer Cave seems like a better option overall. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I mean, I never liked buying the old one anyway, because it just felt weak. At least now you get a shield from it. Something tangible. Oh, the nerf was a Radiant little bit middle tower is under attack. insane currently. Let's see. Skyward, they're heading in towards the Roche pit on the side of Fart Studios. Aegis could be nice, but they keep losing the Meepo very quickly most of the time. Sableite kills Solo I Annihilate kill. in Oof. front of his base. <laughs> Uh-oh, they're in trouble. Yeah, they got Bors, some power. plus a wolf. Look at this pushing power. Very good trade. 
Roshan for a set of barracks and the tier 3 tower. I'll take it any day. Plus, they don't have a glyph now. They use both glyphs. Well, at least they got Roach. Mid tier water, two towers should drop soon enough as well. Hopefully, Sableite even all the way TP'd out, so this would technically be the best moment to take a fight. Unfortunately, they are definitely completely not ready to take an engagement. There's also Yopudge closing in on his Aghanim Scepter, so you're gonna have Urshaker jumping all over the place at the same time. Nushim throws out his cards, holding, hoping to block them out, but he's just hot inside with them. And this just might be it. This might be the game, even though they are holding the Aegis. Skyward will keep it in. The heroes are getting instantly deleted. There is curse available, so when he spawns, Arteezy will curse him probably. Go. Nope. Nice. It'll be Echo for music. now. Echo himself uses Junkman onto Arteezy on the back line. He still has that curse available, but I Annihilate gets annihilated right there. Lots of damage from the support. And everyone around them at the same time, the Sable Light just continuing to push. He constantly keeps on healing because of the Trembles of Slam anyways, building up into the Eternal Shroud. He's impossible to kill, and they're all full HP. Most of them have full mana, and they're not stopping at all. Even a buyback from Arteezy just to join his teammates quickly buys the smoke as well to get there as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, this might be it. Jenkins. He did manage to kill Arteezy with his upgraded shard and the rocket. Hookshot misses. They're ready to close it out. Well, they are at 1k a minute right now. Can they keep it up? Very likely going to be the case. Nice curse coming out. I Annihilate zips into the middle of that curse to just join his teammates in killing each other. And they just get evaporated. It is uh, Shopify looking pretty fly. Their uh, run in the upper bracket where they continue. Yeah, what a surprising two-game victory coming out from Shopify Rebellion.